let's find the interval of convergence of this series. Now for this problem, we could use the ratio test and we could use the root test. The root test looks like it would actually be pretty fun, but I think I'll stick with the ratio test for this problem. And as always for the ratio test, we're gonna take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus one over a sub n. a sub n plus one is what we get if we just replace the n with n plus one into this term inside the series. That's gonna go in the numerator. And in the denominator, we're just gonna copy down the term from that series. And as always, it's easy to forget your limits, so I'm gonna throw that in here. We're gonna do a little copy dot flip. And recall that we can write x to the n plus one as x to the n times x. If we do that simplification here, you'll notice that this x to the n cancels with this x to the n in the denominator. And what we're left with is an x on top. And I'll put the two remaining natural log terms out to the side. Now when we're taking the limit of this as n approaches infinity, x isn't changing, so we can just think of this x as being outside of that limit if it's convenient. And you'll notice as n goes to infinity, the numerator goes to infinity, and the denominator goes to infinity. That is an indeterminate form, so what we're going to do is use L'Hopital's rule, which says that we can take the derivative of the numerator separately from the derivative of the denominator. And if we take the limit of what's left, that should be the same limit as the original problem. Now just one more step of algebra here, we're dividing fractions. So I'll flip the one in the denominator, and we end up with the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus seven over n plus six. Notice that the degree of the numerator and the denominator are the same. So this limit here ends up being the ratio of these leading coefficients, which is one over one. That is just one. So this whole limit is one, and we're left with x as our final limit for the ratio test. Now, I did make a mistake here. I took this x out of these absolute values, so I needed to put some absolute values on all of these x's all the way down the line. And okay, now the final result of the ratio test says that we get a converging series if this limit is less than 1. Rewriting this as a compound inequality says that our x value needs to be between negative 1 and positive 1 for this original series all the way back here to converge. As always, though, we need to test the endpoints of this interval and in this example, that means plugging in x equals negative 1 and plugging in x equals 1 back into this original sum to see if that sum converges for those two x values. The reason we have to do this again is because these endpoints correspond to when the ratio test limit would equal 1. And the ratio test is inconclusive when that limit equals 1. So we need to test those endpoints by hand. Okay, so when x equals negative one, our series looks like this. Notice that this series is an alternating series because it has this negative one to the n term in it. Also notice that this natural log of n plus six is going to go to infinity as n goes to infinity so that this term inside of this alternating series is going to zero. That means that this series is going to converge when x equals negative one. And what we're gonna do is go back to our interval of convergence and add an equal sign in right here. We're just gonna make a little bit of room and test the other endpoint that's x equals 1. And you'll notice that this series is not alternating. 1 to the n is simply 1 in the numerator. So the question is, does this series converge? The answer is actually no, and we could do a couple of different tests to come up with that answer. We could do either a limit comparison test or a direct comparison test with the sum of one over n. Now the sum one over n does diverge, it's the harmonic series. We could either make an argument by direct comparison that this series is greater than the harmonic series above certain values of n. Or we could do a limit comparison test to show the same thing, that this series is going to be greater than the harmonic series. Since the harmonic series diverges, then this series diverges. And our interval of convergence is now complete. We're going to include negative one in that interval, but not positive one. And the way that we would write this in interval notation is we would say that our interval of convergence goes from negative one to one, including negative one, but not one. Okay, I hope that this video helps you out. We'll do some more practice in the next one.